homeowners with expert advice. And by the all-new, completely re-engineered 2014 Acura MDX, the luxury SUV redefined. Experience it now at your local Acura dealer. Welcome to Rogers Center. It's a beautiful evening. 22 degrees. The roof is wide open. You see in tower standing high above Rogers Center. But Porter's Houston Astros are in town. Four game series and the Astros of course very young team and they have made the transition. They're going to go with youth and rebuild their ball club. Now it's time to take a look at the starting lineups. The lineups are brought to you by Quaker State. Real durable oil. The Astros have lost seven of their last eight. Top of the order is Jonathan Villar and he is a speedster. Just called up on Monday a switch hitter that can do a lot of things to get you going. Chris Carter leads American leads in majors with 131 strikeouts. He's a power hitter, but he's prone to the strikeout. And Brandon Barnes hit for the cycle last Friday against Seattle. Went five for five in that ball game, and he is a terrific defender in center field. Mark Burley will take the mound for the 21st start of the season. Just his second career start versus the Houston Astros. Uh, last time out against the Tampa Bay Rays, he lost that game through seven innings, gave up ten hits. Against Tampa. And as he always does, Mark Burley works quickly. He jumps ahead of VR. VR, as we mentioned, a switch hitter. Batting right handed. Well, this will be interesting. This is a very young ball club. When we talk about VR making his major league debut on Monday, he is 22 years old out of the Dominican Republic. And he strikes out. Burley makes quick work of him. First strikeout of the night. Let's take a look at the defense behind Mark Burley. It's Davis Rasmus and Bautista from left to right in the outfield. Brett Laurie is going to play third base, according to the manager, for the rest of the season. Reyes and his tourists up the middle, and Carnot shown at first to J.P. Aaron Sebia. The hand of Mark Burley tonight. Jose Altuve takes strike one. Altuve is 23 years old. He was an all-star last year. It's this ball on the ground. Reyes at short throws him out. Two quick outs for Burley. Well, that is such a good sign right there for Mark Burley. We talked about it in the opening about staying out of the middle of the plate. Use that change up, and I think the cutter is important against the right-handers, but it's got to be up. So Burley picks up a strikeout and a ground out. Now it's the catcher, Jason Castro. Castro, former number one pick of Houston back in 2008 out of Stanford University. There's another strike. How about that? Six for six out of the shoot for Mark Burley. Throwing strikes. Castro was an all star this year. We mentioned. He was picked in 2008, the 10th overall pick in the June free agent draft. Castro has the distinction of being the first catcher taken in the top 10 by Houston since 1983 when Robbie Wine was their first pick. Going away. Cut on and missed. Barely breezes through the Astros in the first. Nine pitches with a couple of strikeouts.
pretty similar at the top, except with Rajay Davis, he is batting second. No Melky Cabrera tonight, Bautista Incarnacion, and Mark DeRosa. Former National Leaguer has a lot of experience against Houston, including 12 home runs and 33 ribbies in 76 games against the Astros. And then in the eighth spot, J.P. Aaron Sebia, 12 of his 17 home runs have come right here at Rogers Center. He loves to hit in this ballpark and he's up against the left-hander. The Navin, Ontario native, Eric Bedard. Makes his fifth career start, first since 2007 in his home country here. To open up this series, three and seven in his 20 games. A very interesting timeout last time, five days ago, six and a third hitless innings. He recorded a season-high 10 strikeouts. Good breaking ball working that day against Seattle. Eric Bedard misses with that first pitch to Reyes. Up and away. Reyes for the homestand. Seven for 26. He homered and hit a pair of doubles so far in the six games. Ball on a strike. Eric Bedard originally drafted by the Orioles in the sixth round in 1999. Pitch for the Orioles from 2002 through 2007. Reyes swings and fouls it into the glove of the catcher. Bedard was responsible, if you will, for rebuilding the Orioles. When you look at the trade that sent him from Baltimore to Seattle, the trade included Chris Tillman and Adam Jones. There's that hook and it missed downstairs. They did their homework. The Baltimore Orioles got an all star in Jones. George Harrell was part of that. He was an all star also. And Chris Tillman's an all star. Bedard at that time, though, was one of the finest left handers in the American League. He was coming off a season with the Orioles where he had 221 strikeouts and 28 starts. Full count to Reyes. Well, you're right. He was indeed a premier lefty. And at that time, the general manager was Andy McPhail. And McPhail identified two players he wanted in that trade, Adam Jones and Chris Tillman. And he kept milking the Mariners for a bit more. He ended up with a heck of a deal. Full count. Bounce foul outside of third. The trade overall, it took place February 2008. The Orioles traded Eric Bedard to Seattle for a left handed pitcher, Tony Butler, Adam Jones, a right handed pitcher, Cam Michelio, the left handed reliever, George Shell, and Chris Tillman. That is the, the risk you take when you trade a lot of your young players for one star in the major league. He could go south, and the other guys could blossom. Well, and like you said, it took a Heck of a the job of scouting to identify Tillman. Everybody knew Adam Jones was going to be a pretty good player. He uh, had success in the minor leagues with Seattle, had actually made his major league debut with the Mariners. And Bedard they gave up a lot, but at the same time, the cupboard was fairly bare in Baltimore, and they restocked it dramatically. That was a big start. Also, the Tejada trade that the Orioles did got them five players from these Astros. Another 3 2 pitch from Bedard. Line to left, and that's going to get down for a base hit. An eight pitch hit back for Jose Reyes, and he starts things off with a single. Take a look at the defense behind Eric Bedard for Houston. It's Chris Carter, Brandon Barnes, and Justin Maxwell in the outfield. Barnes can really go get him in the center. Matt Dominguez at third, and Jonathan VR is the shortstop. He's got a lot of range in the strong arm. Jose Altuve, Brett Wallace, the former Blue Jay at first, and Jason Castro behind the plate. And the shortstop you're talking about, VR, is one of those young players that the Astros got from an established playing team like the Philadelphia Phillies. They got him for Roy Oswald. Rajay Davis takes a first pitch strike from Benar. Davis has seen Bedard in the past. He's just one for eight against the Astros lefty. Rajay gets the start tonight as he is hitting at a 342 clip against left handed pitching. Changeup is fouled off the end of the bat. Davis leads the Blue Jays in batting average against lefty pitching. 
Yeah, he has got to play against the lefties. He just brings so much to the table for Toronto when he gets on base. We saw it last night. Scored another run. 31 runs now for Rajay and 178 at bats. So he can make things happen. He's got a little bit more range in the outfield also. Oh, and Jill Reyes with a short lead at first. Davis goes upstairs and fouls it up. Eric Bedard making his fifth career start here at Rogers Center. Overall, this is his 12th career start against the Jays. He is two and four as a result of 11 previous starts. Bounced and blocked by Castro. Mentioned Jason Castro was drafted out of Stanford University in 2008, and he always has a reputation of being a fine defensive catcher. Did a good job of shifting to his left and squaring that breaking ball up. He's had knee problems, and it's really robbed him of a lot of playing time. He missed all of 2011 with a torn right ACL. You can see there's that universal flip of the thumb. Castro tried to camouflage a little bit. He threw it in the midst of all of those other signs, but we have seen pretty consistently when the catcher flips that thumb, pitcher's going to throw to first. Throw over there. Bedard doesn't have that great of a move. I wouldn't classify it as a typical left hander with that good move like an Andy Pettit or Mark Burley tonight. Just missed inside. Bernard thought he'd caught the inside corner. Mentioned Eric Bedard in his last start. Didn't give up a hit. Came out of the ball game. He had thrown, in his estimation, enough pitches. He threw 109 pitches, left the ball game after six and a third. Did not allow a hit. Three runs scored, just one earned run. He walked five but struck out ten. That's why the pitch count was elevated. Season high in strikeouts with ten. And the walks like you said that one out of the zone. He also said at the end of that game he said hey if I I've had three shoulder surgeries. So I am not going to go over one hundred and ten pitches. I'd rather pitch a couple more years than face another batter. So Blue Jays wait him out. Bautista on deck. Reyes single to start the ball game against Eric Bedard. There goes Reyes, and it's rounded to third, second for one, back to first double play. Matt Dominguez did a good job of unloading in a hurry to get the ball to Altuve at second, who turned it very quickly. Big out for Eric Bedard. Let's take a look at the scouting report brought to you by TD Bank, proud sponsor of your Toronto Blue Jays. Eric Bedard basically has four pitches. The fastball, it's about 89 miles an hour to 90, not what it was before all those shoulder surgeries. The cutter and the changeup important pitches, but that curveball, that is his big pitch right there. The out pitch, they're hitting 181 against that curveball this year. And again, he had a good one his last time out against Seattle. Houston has turned 116 double plays now. Second most in the American League, and that's a result of a lot of base runners. Yeah, a lot of base runners, and they've only hit into 80. Turned way more than they've hit into. Bautista in the third spot. Takes a fastball strength. 1-1 one, one count to the Blue Jays right fielder. We mentioned Eric Bedard grew up in Navin, Ontario. He would play college baseball in junior college in Connecticut, was drafted by the Orioles in 1999. Pretty good pitch right at the bottom of the zone. Yeah, he was as good 
as they came I thought in the American League doesn't have the the stuff like he did back then his fastball was mid 90s with a great breaker. Put up those kind of numbers in that ballpark in this league you got to have some good stuff. He had 200 strikeouts pitching for the Orioles in 2007 and that's what you were talking about that led to. Seattle making that trade and giving up so much young talent for Bedard. He was top of his game. And the next year with the Mariners, he was only able to get into 15, 15 starts and 81 innings. And it's since that year, there's been a lot of injuries to Eric. Signed a minor league contract in January this year to an opportunity to come to camp, and he pitched his way onto this ball club. Two and two to Bautista. Another foul back. Bedard at one time threw in the mid 90s and he had a great fastball to complement that good hook and changeup. But he still has that very relaxed delivery and that fastball will sneak up on you. Slow and deliberate. Takes a lot of time in between pitches. You can see how much time he takes. Throws from the first base side of the rubber. Almost a little bit almost crossed his body. Line to Dominguez. Couple of hard hit balls, but the Blue Jays have nothing to show for it. Matt Dominguez started the double play and snares a line drive. We've played an inning at Rogers Center. It's a scoreless game. Friday, July 26, the Blue Jays and Astros will hook up. The game starts at 7.07. Come on down to Rogers Center early and check out the pregame festivities happening outside Gate 10. Win great prizes, enjoy the live music, and there's a licensed area. Gates open at 4.30 p.m. Call the Blue Jays for tickets at 416-341-1234. Chris Carter with a 2-0 count. Fouls this one straight back. Carter's 26 years old. He grew up in the Bay Area of San Francisco, Redwood City, to be exact. Originally drafted by the Chicago White Sox in 2005. He's a power hitter, guy that will knock the ball out of the ballpark, but he's also prone to the strikeout, as we mentioned, 131 strikeouts this year. Yeah, saw him last year with the Oakland Athletics, and you're right, he's got light tower type of power. But you can find some holes in that swing. Go after the breaking ball. We'll chase that. You can go up to him. And Burley walks him. So lead off walk here in the second. As Carter makes his way to first base, let's take a look at the scouting report for Mark Burley. Looking a little bit deeper into the numbers, a changeup is a big pitch for Burley, but this year he's throwing 5% fewer changeup, more fastballs. You say 
Well, why is that? Well, he just hasn't had the feel at time for that changeup, which is a great pitch for him. At times he gets on the side of the ball and doesn't get the movement that he needs to get the ground ball. It's going to be interesting to watch this young Astros lineup facing Mark Burley. And if you're going to chase pitches off the plate, he won't throw any over. He'll continue to let you chase. But if they show patience, Burley will have to come back over that strike zone. They didn't show it in the first inning. Struck out two of the three batters very quickly. Carter showing some patience there to get the leadoff walk. J.D. Martinez, 25 years old. He is the D.H. tonight. He was a 20th round pick in 2009. Grew up in Miami. And that could change him. They mentioned when Burley is on, and boy, he can paint both sides of the plate, work back and forth with the velocity. And his last time out, just before the All-Star break, he didn't have that location. Yeah, and I asked Pete Walker about that, and he says he just loses his changeup at times. He just gets on the side of it, and the ball spins, if you will, sideways. And it just stays in the middle of the plate. When he gets on top of it, and they were going to work on that, on his side sessions, get the ball out of his hand, have it really tumble off of his fingers and get the movement down in the strike zone. Only throws at about 78 miles per hour or 79 miles per hour. Pretty good pitch. Burley didn't get to call. Of course, he has to live on the edges when he does that. He's pretty good. He's pitched well here at home. Mentioned in the opening in a 4 and 2 record here at Rogers Center. And this is a tough ballpark to pitch well in. J.D. Martinez strikes out. Chase that outside pitch. Three strikeouts already for Mark Burley. Well, he's pitching better here, I think, because he hasn't been giving up the home runs early on the ball. And we know how it flies out of this ballpark. He is just getting hit and hit hard. I think he's learning how to pitch here. And that's just keep the ball down, keep it on the edges, and get some of these hitters to roll over. Keep the ball out of the air. Brett Wallace. He goes after the first pitch and pops it back over the screen. Brett Wallace is 26 years old. He too grew up in the Bay Area of California, Marin, California. He was a first round pick 2008. The St. Louis Cardinals spent some time in Oakland in 2009. He was a part of three pretty significant trades. He went from Oakland to St. Louis for Matt Holliday. Then he was involved in a three way trade that included the Blue Jays and Roy Holliday. And then he was also involved in the trade that netted. Roy Oswald for the Phillies. So he has moved around a bit. All right. So Oswald, Halliday, Holiday, all for the this guy right here. He was involved. Yep. And the key to a couple of those trades. And here he strikes out, chases another pitch away. That's four strikeouts for Burley. Keep the ball away. And if they're going to start swinging at it, and keep swinging at it, keep throwing it out there. Breaking ball just keeps sweeping away from Brent Wallace. Um, and this is what you're going to get with young hitters. And young hitters have a tendency to think they can hit everything. And boy, if you're not patient, we've talked about it time and time again. It's hard enough to hit strikes in the big leagues, but nearly impossible to try to hit balls. And if you think that the ball is outside the strike zone, by accident, it's not. And if, they, if you're in swing mode and you're you're up there hacking like Mark Burley thought he saw from Brett Walls, he's not going to throw a strike to you. Justin Maxwell quickly behind 0 and 2. Maxwell trying to be patient. Burley won't allow it. You know, look where that cutter is. That's, I think, where you need to throw it to the right-handers. About belt high or right below your hands. You say, okay, well, why do you want it in like that and up? Doesn't that ball get hit out of the ballpark? Very rarely. Usually you foul it or you take it or you get jammed. 0 oh, and 2. 
Change up. Maxwell strikes out. Burley strikes out the side in the second. Lead off walk and nothing more for Houston. Burley has five strikeouts already. When we come back, it'll be Edwin Encarnacion. He with the 26 home runs. And Mark DeRose has always hit well against Houston. And Meiser is Stewart's. Edwin Encarnacion. Eric Bedard delivers a first pitch strike to Edwin Encarnacion. He starts the second inning. It'll be Encarnacion, DeRosa, and DeStuis for the Jays. Took something off that pitch. Looked like it had a little bit of a cut to it, more like a cut slider than a Full blown change yeah, up from the dark. But not that hard cutter that he throws in the 90 mile per hour range. Right there, took a little something off of that one. This has popped up. Well, there's another good example of what inside will do for a pitcher. One of the best power hitters in the game. And that ball was right on the inside corner, and all Incarnacion could do was pop it out of play. It's a hard pitch to get to. It's a very hard pitch. You can see it on pitch tracks. It was up and it was in. And you say, well, don't those pitches get knocked out of the ballpark? No. It's tough to keep that ball fair, especially with two strikes. The one down and in, though, you just drop the barrel of the bat to the ball. He hit it hard, but well fouled. Now look at that one. That one was down and in with a little bit of break on it. Those are the pitches that get hit and hit hard. Edwin has done a great job this year with two strikes of shortening up his swing and making contact. More walks than strikeouts this year. Bernard tried to hump up on that heater and missed up and away. Well, Jays did a good job in the first inning of making. Eric Bedard work. He threw 22 pitches in the first inning, and he said he's not going to go over 110. So if you have a couple more innings like that, we'll get into that bullpen a lot early. Bedard strikes him out with that good high fastball. That's the first strikeout for Eric Bedard. Fans, it's time for a BlackBerry sneak peek stat of the game. Brought to you by the new BlackBerry Z10 and Q10. Bill, to Q moving. Well, tonight, it has to do with Mark DeRosa. Hot hitting since July. Now, he was good in June at 310 with an on base of plus slugging of 634, but July has been even better. 321 with an on base plus slugging 1.030. And you know what he's been doing? Looking to hit the ball the other way. He wears a t-shirt every day called Apo Taco. What has to do with hitting home runs to right field. He hit one the other day. 
the other way, and I asked him today, going to go Oppo Taco, and he said, I'm going to be looking out there. They're set up away. Too high takes it for a ball. At the Rosa, he makes up his mind on a particular game plan. He'll stick to it until it gets to two strikes. Pops this from back behind the screen out of play. Oftentimes, and I did this as a hitter, I'm not sure if you did, but you'd go up to a, the plate with a game plan. The pitcher would fall behind, and I used to switch my game plan. DeRosa won't allow him to do that, won't allow himself to do that. He stays with the plan. Yeah, he stays right in there, and he makes up his mind, and he does his homework, he figures out how that pitcher is going to get him out. Another fastball upstairs. He'll stay right there. Hits the ball the other way as good as any right hander on this team. It's an inter interesting topic that we talk about where pitchers can pitch and what hitters like to do at the plate. It's an off speed pitch. He was able to get a piece of it because he was staying out over the plate. Years ago, when I first came to the major leagues, is it was always about pull hitting. Right handers hit it to left, left handers hit it to right. And then the slider became more prominent. Eventually, the splitter came into vogue, and hitters started going to the opposite field. And now there are few pitchers that can do what Bedard just did push hitters back off the plate. But most hitters, and I'm going to say 99% of the hitters in the major leagues today, are looking for balls on the outer three quarters of the plate. They'll give up that inner quarter to cover the outer three quarters. You know what? I'll take it a step further. Three quarters of the good hitters look for the ball away. The bad hitters look for one pitch in one spot for the hole at bat, and that's why they hit 200. They just can't make that adjustment. Right now, Bedard is just reaching back with a couple of strikes and using his fastball in the upper part of the strike zone. Well, Bedard's got the reputation of having that good curveball. And everybody thinks with two strikes he might bounce that curveball. So if he can elevate that fastball, he's going to catch some guys flat footed. Meister is Torres, the switch hitter, batting right handed against Bedard. Only four Blue Jays in this lineup have faced Bedard in the past. Torres is one of them. He's just two for five against Bedard. Fans, if you want your emails, if you want your baseball questions answered by our team of experts, Email ask the experts at sportsnet.ca and keep your eye out for the home hardware ask the experts segment later on in the game. Two out, so two to Isturis, and there's that breaking ball. And how about that? Mark Burley struck out the side in the top of the second. Eric Bedard does the same in the bottom half, still scoreless at Rogers Center.
Jays on Sportsnet. Brought to you by the all-new, completely re-engineered 2014 Acura MDX. The luxury SUV redefined. Experience it now at your local Acura dealer. Houston Astros in the American League for the first time here at Rogers Center to open up a four-game series. First time the Astros have been at Rogers Center since 2011. It's only the second time in franchise history Houston has played here. Bo Porter in his first year as the skipper of the Astros. He's 41 years old. Well, that ball ate him up. Matt Dominguez hits the weak grounder to first, and he is retired. One down. Here and where was it? One more time, up and into a right-hander. Make a pitch that Mark Burley's going to have to throw, and he totally tied up Dominguez. Watch where this one is. Up. Try to pull your hands, and then you try and check your swing. And it's a nice, easy 3-0. <laughs> you can see where it was on the pitch tracks, borderline inside, and. Dominguez just couldn't extend his arms. That's the one thing hitters want to do. They want to get that extension. Center fielder Brandon Barnes, number nine hitter. Mentioned it. Barnes hit for the cycle in a five for five effort on Friday against the Mariners. It's the eighth cycle in franchise history. He was the first Astro to have the cycle since Luke Scott did it in 2006 against the Diamondbacks. He was the first cycle by a right handed hitter since 02 when it was Craig Biggio's turn. Tough to get it by Mark Burley. Four time Gold Glover makes an easy play on the comeback for two outs. Five straight retired by Burley. Pretty clean through the first time through the lineup just to walk to Carter. The Astros are young, youngest team in the majors. They average 26 and a half years old. Miami is just a half year older in their average age. Pittsburgh is third in that department. But they turned over their organization, and some of their key players go. Of course, the heart and soul of the team for the last decade or so. And Craig Biggio, Jeff Bagwell, and Lance Berkman. Time to go out and try and find some more of those. Develop some from your farm system. We saw the Astros. You mentioned that they were here in 2011. They've got two players left on their roster from the last time we saw them. two. Well, they have a new ownership group headed by Jim Crane. He took over in November of 2011. The yards shows bunt and pulls the bat back. It's three and one. But this is not unexpected. Everybody knew that the Astros were going to be rebuilding over the next couple of years. They've had the number one pick in the draft for two years in a row now. Foul outside of the bag. And they will do it and build. Get a solid foundation of young players and coach those players and they'll get to the big leagues in a few years. It's hard to fathom that the Astros are in the American League. They're in the American League West for the first time. And Burley walks VR. Second walk he's issued. It comes with two outs in the third. Of course, the theory behind the move of the Astros was to even out the respective leagues, 15 teams each now. But the flip side of that is you get an interleague game every night. I still think of them as, as a National League yeah. team. It's hard to imagine them being in the American League. Just like when Milwaukee left the American League and went over to the National League. It took a couple of years to put that one in the brain and remember it. The R is a threat to steal. He had 31 steals in AAA. 31 for 38. So far he's one for one. Had a steal in his Major League debut on Monday. And this should be interesting. Against Mark Burley. He's got one of the best pickoff moves in all of baseball. That wasn't it right there. That was a. Here's. The, here's my get me over. 
pitch. Yeah, and you can bet the first base coach Dave Clark has reminded VR it's a great move. He wants to see another throw. He got picked on. And kind of shown to Reyes and VR. Welcome to the big leagues. Just another victim of Mark Burley's great pickoff. He went on the first move and he went the wrong way. Burley gave him the pedestrian move first and then broke out the A move. No problem as he ends the third, picks VR up first. For the Astros had a great game going. In fact, six and a third of no hit ball. Had the Mariners really baffled. They had ten strikeouts. He had five walks in the game and actually gave up three runs. He left after six and a third of no hit baseball. His pitch count at that point was 109. I mean that was two starts in a row that he hit 109. He gave up those three ends. Only one of them was earned. Picked up the loss and part of a trivia question now. For Eric Bedard. Since 1921, there have been six pitchers that have left the ball game with six and a third innings or more, no hits allowed, and one or fewer earned runs allowed, and picked up a loss. <laughs> Bedard was the most recent game against the Mariners. Interesting, there are three Astro players. That have that distinction. Bedard, Don Wilson in 74, and Ken Johnson in 1964 when he was a member of the Colt 45s. But it's interesting, and anytime you see that kind of line score, it generally includes a lot of walks. Steve Barber in 1967, while pitching for the Orioles, had 10 walks in eight and two thirds. And lost one to nothing to the Tigers. Eight and two thirds, ten walks. Actually, he lost two to one. Tigers scored two in the ninth. Ten walks. Pitched a little bit like Espio Rogers last night, pitching out of jams out of all problems, night long, but not giving up any hits. Kobe Rasmus takes strike two. No hits allowed. One or fewer earned runs. Six point one innings plus. And lose. Don Wilson did his against the Big Red Machine back yeah. in 1974. Rasmus drives it into center. Barnes broke back. Now he comes in and makes the catch routine out here to start the third for Bedard. So J.P. and C.B. we mentioned 12 of his 17 home runs have come right here at Rogers Center. And C.B. batting 225 for the season. He is facing Bernard for the first time. Oh. 
He goes down the right side. His ball is hit deep down the right side, but slices into the seats out of play. Now Aaron Seavey is a notorious pool hitter. He stayed on that outside pitch and gave it a ride down the right field corner, but it sliced out of play. Swinging the bat just a little bit better because he's looking to use the whole field right down the line. You can see there's not a lot of room down in that corner. When you hit it down the left field line or the right field line. It looked like that ball was going to stay fair and then at the last second sliced foul. Interesting how the Astros have adjusted their infield defense after one swing of the bat. You can see they're straight away now but on the first pitch they were playing dramatically to pull out truly the second baseman was almost straight up the middle. But now they have gone back to straight away for Aaron Sebian. I wouldn't say JP is a pull hitter like that. Not like we have seen from Encarnacion or or Bautista. He can drive the ball out of this ballpark when he's right swinging field. the bat. Well, no question yep. about it. Bedard misses inside. It's one and two. Ed Bedard struck out the side in the second. Got Encarnacion, Rosa and Destouris. There's only three strikeouts. Of the night. Well, there's a good hard slider. That's the pitch you were talking about. It disappeared. Looks like a strike on the inside corner, and then it breaks down and in under the bat. Well, Brett Laurie will step in with two outs last night in the fifth inning. Blue Jays had been a no hit by Ricky Nolasco until Lori stepped up. Not for long after a couple of blocks. He bangs this ball off the center field wall. It looked like Andre Ethier gave up on that. Brett Lori certainly will take that double, a couple of RBIs, starting to swing it a little bit better now. And the chance to face some left handers. He faced Capuano from the the Dodgers the other night and Ryu the first night. So nothing like when you're slumping to face some some left handers to get yourself right. Breaking ball he strokes foul outside of third. Well you're right and anytime you're really having a tough time at the plate the last thing you want to see is a sidearm and right hander come to the plate where you're trying to hit a strike. Locate the pitch out of his hand and determine breaking ball or fastball. But with that ball coming into you from lefties, you have a fighting chance. You're just more comfortable. You see the ball a little bit quicker, also from a lefty. It's out there for you. Well, Bedard got that fastball in a good spot. And you don't have to cover, for the most part, the outside part of the plate. This is Brett Laurie early on working with Chad Matola. Some soft toss, some flips just to get the bat going. Breaking ball. The R throws on the run in time to get Lori, and Bedard has retired. Eight in a row.
source for live baseball. Listen to live audio, follow games, pitch by pitch, and enjoy in-game video highlights. The app is available on the iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch, Android, and BlackBerry Z10. Season-long subscription packages are available. Visit BlueJays.com. For more information, at Bat 13 is the official app of Major League Baseball. Jose Altuve, first pitch swinging, flies out to Bautista, first out of the fourth. The Blue Jays have lost seven in a row, and they need a stopper, and Mark Burley so far is doing exactly what they need from him, setting down the Astros very quickly. Jason Castro, the left-handed hitting catcher. Well, we, we've known about the Houston Astros. They're a free swinging team. And, and you mentioned that they're a young team, not very patient. Like some of the teams that you will see in the American League East, like the Boston Red Sox, New York Yankees, and Tampa Bay. So this should be a good matchup for Burley. If he is on, and he's got that sinker working. This is popped up. And Sevilla will watch it sail behind the screen out of play. Houston is last in the American League with a 236 batting average. The Tigers lead as a club they've hit 280 start of play. Blue Jays right in the middle of the pack. Bo Porter, we mentioned he is in his first year as the Astros skipper. He was most recently third base coach for the Washington Nationals. There's a little tapper. Burley goes down to a knee to make sure that doesn't get away from him. Two quick outs. Bo Porter was a three-sport athlete in high school. He went to University of Iowa and played football and baseball for the leg legendary Hayden Fry, great football coach. He was the MVP of the football team at Iowa his senior year. Terrific player. Played parts of three seasons as a player in the big leagues with the Cubs in 99, A's in 2000, and Rangers in 2001. Chris Carter walked back in the second inning. Pops this one over the Astros dugout out of play. Bo Porter is the youngest manager in the major leagues, and it's appropriate that he has the youngest team in the major leagues as well. They'll learn together. And there's a lot of things that you can do as a manager, which he did at spring training, trying to win some spring training games and have the right attitude when you come to the ballpark every day and it started this spring. Set the, the mindset of what you expect from your players when you come up to the big leagues. Run out everything. Be a professional. Play the game the right way. Barely missed the outside corner. It's a full count to Carter. John Malley is the hitting coach in his first year with Bo Porter. And there's a deep drive, but well fouled. He got the head out on that There's one. the power that he has. If you miss, he can go deep on you. That's a fifth deck foul ball. One more time, inner half, no stride, use your hands. Get to it quickly. But again, another example of when a hitter does square up that inside pitch and hits it hard. Nine times out of ten, it's foul. Yeah, can't, can't do a whole lot with it. You foul it, pop it up, or jam yourself. That's off the end of the bat. Encarnacion will wave Burley off and take it himself. Mark Burley, another one, two, three inning. In the top half of the fourth. Blue Jays top of the order when we come back. Jose Reyes has singled already and be followed by Ranjay Davis and the three hitter. Jose Bautista when we come back. Still a scoreless game.
like you've never seen them before. It's Sportsnet Magazine as it presents the beauty of sport. Visit sportsnet.ca slash the beauty of sport. So far, we've got a pitcher's duel going on. Only one hit in the ball game, and Jose Reyes has that hit in his first hit bat against Eric Bedard. Shows bunt and takes inside. 2-0. Well, they got to figure him out right here. They Second time through now. Bedard has struck out four of the batters. The five that he is. Excuse me, the nine that he has got out. They've got to get to him now. A little bit better idea what he's featuring. Bedard himself has not really fared that well of late. He's 0-4 over his last four starts with a 430 ERA. Up and in, three and one. Eric Bedard is 0-3 over his last seven starts against the Blue Jays. He hasn't beaten them since May of 2005. Ray is taking all the way. It's a full count. Well, the Blue Jays have lost seven in a row, all six games on this homestand. Rajay Davis, the two hitter, is on deck. This is the final series of the 10 game homestand Houston for four. Then the Blue Jays will go out west and things don't get easier out west. Where do we start Oakland Oakland Ooh. Oakland Anaheim Seattle 10 games on the West Coast swing. Reyes strikes out another high fastball and Bedard has five K's so far. The all new completely re engineered 2014 Acura MDX, the luxury SUV redefined. Experience it now at your local Acura dealer. Five strikeouts for Eric Bedard. Three of them have been on high fastballs. Rajay oh. Davis grounded into a double play. Excuse me, Buck. All of them swinging, so he's around the plate. It's basically, from what we have seen here, first time through, fastball slider. So if you want to hit him, I'd go up there early looking for one of those pitches, get the two strikes, cut that one down. His fastball's got a little bit more juice to it than what we have seen in the last couple of years. Yeah, and he's got a little shorter arm swing, too. He turns his back to the hitter, and that arm comes at you very quickly. It's a high fly ball. Barnes broke back, recovers in time, and Davis is retired. Two outs for Jose Bautista. Jose Bautista in last night's game looked like this was going to be a game winner right here. Hustling all the way, shoots the ball to the right side with a runner at second base, and nobody out. Roger Davis came around to score. That would last for a, a, about another inning or so. But Bautista showing what you need to do to move the runners up and it almost worked. Bautista did a great job. He had two strikes in that situation. Rajay Davis had come into the game as a pinch runner. He stole second and Bautista moved him up. He was rewarded with an infield hit and Davis scored the tying run on the air. That gave the Blue Jays a 3 2 lead, and the Dodgers would immediately tie it up on the Rasmus air in the top of the ninth. Ball on the strike to Bautista. You know, if he hits that same ball right now, he might have a double. The way that the Astros have really pulled around to left field for Jose. You've got the three infielders on the left side. Barnes, the center fielder, is almost in straightaway left center. The only guy on the right side of the whole diamond is Brett Wallace, the first baseman. And he's playing almost straightaway second base. Shoot one to right if you have to. 
Two and one, two outs. Breaking ball in there. It's two and two. Bedard hasn't used the curveball a lot, but he's used it in good situations. He's back to even at two and two. There's that up and away fastball. He is. Shown his plan, especially to the power hitters. He's going to run the ball upstairs and see if he can't get him to chase. Some other thing that he is doing. Another thing is he's really creating an angle to those right handers. He's on the first base side of the pitching rubber. He really turns his back, like you said, turn, hides the ball, turns, and creates a tough angle for the hitter. So he loses Bautista with ball four. That's the first walk issued by Bedard, and then he'll come with two outs in the fourth. Doug Brocale is the pitching coach, also pitched with the Astros. He is helping with Bo Porter and that pitching staff. Brocale, his second full season, he was named the interim pitching coach in June of 2011. So Edwin Encarnacion was a strikeout victim in the second. He'll bat with two outs. Dart falling behind in Canacion. But Dart's got a pretty pretty good feel for pitching. He won't allow you to really pick up on a pattern. And I think there was a time where he might just rear back and throw a fastball here, but now he has several weapons he can use in this hitter's count. And he throws that fastball and it's ripped into the seats. No secret. What he's trying to do, ride it up there, ride that fastball up in the strike zone. Now, Encarnacion can hit that pitch, get up there and get it. Look at his head right down on that high fastball, just a little bit too quick. And again, that pitch inside is difficult to keep fair. Two balls and a strike. Bottom of the fourth, Bautista at first. Isn't it funny how you get veterans like Bedard and Burley? They are not rattled at all by the loud contact that they give up. Chris Carter hit a couple of balls deep, but well foul. Burley just kept pitching. Same for Bedard. Edwin's hit two balls right on the nose, but not even close to being a hit. They don't hear the sound of the ball hitting the bat. They hear the sound saying strike one or strike two. There's a opposite field hit. This is going to be extra bases. Bautista makes his turn around second. Justin Maxwell cut off throw. Here's the relay, and it's going to go to third. And kind of show is out. The run scores. Bautista scored ahead of the out at third base. In Canacion with the RBI double. Bautista hustling all the way around. Maxwell through to the cutoff man. Altuve, who in tune went to third to end the inning, but the Blue Jays on the RBI double by Incarnacion have given Burley a one nothing lead. The out at third, but not until Bautista crossed home.
the TD Comfort Zone, our fans have received a free seat upgrade courtesy of TD. While over in the Jays Care Community Clubhouse, we welcome a group from Future Possibilities for Kids. Welcome to Rogers Center. We hope you're having a great night. It is a gorgeous night. Cool night, just 22 degrees at the start of play tonight. Couldn't ask for a better night. The Blue Jays have a 1 0 lead. J.D. Martinez is the D.H. He struck out against Mark Burley. Burley struck out the side in the second. You got Martinez, Wallace, and Maxwell. And that's who he will face here in the fifth. Going to see good hitters now and young hitters to see how they adjust to Mark Burley. They got them to chase off the plate first time through the order. Struck out two in the first, all three in the second. Hasn't had a strikeout since. You'll see if they'll start to take that change up that's just off the plate, or they'll just go up there and keep swinging. Perfect spot for that pitch, and J.D. Martinez will walk back to the dugout. Second time he struck out tonight. That's six for Burley so far. Burley's season high is seven. He's done that twice. Brett Wallace. Mentioned Wallace was with the Blue Jays and he spent 2010 in AAA Las Vegas with the Jays. Thought to be a pretty big prospect for all those teams that you were talking about St. Louis and Oakland and Toronto. Toronto turned him into a pretty decent player. You were able to send him to Wallace to Houston. A good Anthony Ghost. The only difference is Wallace is in the big leagues and Ghost is struggling in AAA. Ground ball foul outside of first. Brett Wallace is one of those guys that's hit that has hit wherever he has played going back to his first year in pro ball. He had 327 at Quad Cities in the Cardinal system. They moved him to double A and he hit 367. Albeit over the course of 13 games. What a pitch by Burley. Boy he is working over this young lineup. Another strikeout. That's seven and it matches his season high. You could win a trip to Alcatraz. Look in specially marked cases of Sleeman. No purchase necessary. Legal drinking age required. Bit of a shot of Lake Ontario in the marina, not far from the ballpark, a couple blocks away. Two down, Justin Maxwell goes after the first pitch, and that's the first hit of the ball game for Houston. Not waiting around, he goes after that first pitch and singles to center. I don't think you can wait around. You're a right handed hitter, you got a left hander out there, Burley. He's going to try and get ahead, strike one. Maxwell sends it back through the middle. First hit for the Astros. Comes with two outs in the fifth inning. Matt Dominguez takes strike one. Dominguez grounded out to first for the first out of the third inning. There's a high fly ball, shallow right field. Bautista jogs in. He makes the catch. The Astros get their first hit off Mark Burley, but he's tied his season high. He's got seven strikeouts and a one nothing lead.
360. It's Blue Jays Express. It's a 30 minute interactive post game show hosted by Eric Smith with Paul Spalteric and Greg Rallery. They provide analysis. It's Blue Jays Express right after the game on Sportsnet 360. Blue Jays had a terrific turnout for the Dodgers series over 102,000 for three games and not a bad crowd tonight for the Thursday night opener of this Houston Astros series Mark DeRosa goes after the first pitch from the dog Jonathan VR throws him out how Going about down. the fans here in Toronto you know Blue Jays are sixth in the American League in attendance only Texas Los Angeles New York Boston and Detroit have outdrawn the Blue Jays this year well, the Blue Jays have done a great job of creating this upbeat atmosphere. They have changed the windows area in center field. It's become a very popular destination for the younger crowd. And it's a place to be. Certainly, it gives encouragement that when these games start turning around in the Blue Jays' favor, this is going to be another destination for a lot of fans but they love that 200 outfield level in the center yeah we all do and it's always jamming young crowd out there sitting around it's like you're out with your friends and watching a ball game and chatting it up two and oh Meister is stirs now three and oh Blue Jays have averaged 31,000, just two under 32,000 for 52 home dates. There's a strike, it's three and one. Texas Rangers lead in average home attendance 39,407. They too have played 52 home games. 3 1 to his stress. Fouled into the glove of Jason Castro. Blue Jays have a 1 0 lead. Edwin Encarnacion drove in the only run of the ball game. Kobe Erasmus waits behind his stress to face Eric Bedard. You know, I've been impressed with Bedard. We, we saw him a few years ago. We told you when he was really good. Hasn't really been that pitcher since that time, 2008 or so, 2009. Spent some time with the Red Sox. Talked about his 10 strikeouts and his no hitter for six of the third innings last time. He looks pretty good tonight. His fastball looks like it's back. It's a high fly ball to left. Long run for Chris Carter into foul ground, and he can't get to it. Well, it looked like he had a shot at making a play. That ball was. Probably four or five feet from the wall on the warning track, and Carter just couldn't get there. He's played some first base and learned to play the outfield. Looked like he had a shot his right against the Stewarts. But to finish that thought about Bedard, could he be a guy who would be interested to some teams that are in the playoff hunt? A veteran left hander? We're a week away from the trade deadline. Next Wednesday. 4 p.m. Eastern time. That's a non waiver trade deadline period. Yeah, Bedard, I would think, might be appealing. I think the biggest thing with him is the question of health. And he certainly appears to be healthy. Right. The ball's jumping out of his hand enough. Let's Eric see. Bedard never had any postseason experience, but he's certainly a well established veteran. Another hard hit ball, but foul. His fastball looks good. His breaking ball looks really good. And the video that we showed of his last start against the Seattle Mariners, who've been hitting the ball as well as anybody in the month of July, he made him look sick. Breaking ball was really snapping off. Bedard is 66 and 71 for his career. Another breaking ball, another foul back. But he's got a two, uh, 390 career earned run average. Very good. And obviously, everybody's trying to add to their ball clubs. Anybody that's in a pennant race. Of course, the Atlanta Braves had a tough break last night. Tim Hudson will be lost for the season. He broke his ankle covering first. Line to this shortstop. Jonathan Villar has it. But Eric Bedard 
made his debut with the Orioles in 2002 and he had a great run. He was 10 games over 500 through the 2009 season. Then the injuries caught up to him as he already jumped. The opponent's batting average jumped, as did the whip. But what I've seen tonight suggests that he can help a team. You put him in a good spot on a good ball club and he can serve as a fourth or fifth starter. The last couple of years he's pitched for the Mariners, the Red Sox, the Pirates, and now the Astros. And I was thinking Atlanta after the injury to Tim Hudson, maybe Pittsburgh. I think Pittsburgh is going to do something for sure. Had a blown save tonight as Bryce Harper or this afternoon. Bryce Harper had a walk off home run. His first walk off home run of his young career. But with the injury to Jason Grilly, of course, Bernard's not going to work out with him. But mm -hmm. he was with Pittsburgh for a while last year. Eventually got released. Rasmus hits it hard. This is a fair ball and bangs off the wall. Justin Maxwell gets to it quickly. Rasmus slides into second with a two out double. For Rasmus, his 21st double. Comes with two outs here in the fifth. That's how you hit a high inside fastball. Watch him get up and yank that ball into the corner. Now he's got to hustle because Maxwell gets over there quickly. He's second on the team in outfield assist. And the ball comes right back to him. He comes up fireman Colby came out of the batter's box thinking double all the way. Aaron Sebia, the strikeout victim in the third. Blue Jays have a one nothing lead. Rasmus double only the third Jays hit off Eric Bedard. Aaron Sebia struck out on a slider down and in from Bedard. That came in the third inning, and here he fouls the ball off his foot. Prep Laurie is on deck if Aaron Sebia can keep the inning alive. Laurie right, grounded out to short to end the third inning. Rasmus walks off second with the double. Bedard's not even looking at Rasmus at yeah, second base. I was thinking the exact same thing. He could have third base if he wants it. Altuve, the second baseman, not really holding him on or jockeying for position. Colby can get way off there. If he wants third base, he can have it. Takes a look back at second now. And missed way outside. I think Bedard is being very realistic here, thinking if I get in CBA, I don't care what Rasmus does. I'm thinking he can get a huge secondary lead, a one hopper to the outfield. He's not going to get him because you can get that big secondary lead and score on a single, any type of single. Yeah, to especially the outfield. with two outs. Mm -hmm. Altuve should help Bedard out just a bit if you can. Narrow the lead of Rasmus, you might have a shot to throw him out at home. Two balls and two strikes on the Blue Jays catcher. Bedard has five strikeouts so far. And CB this season struggled with runners in scoring position. Got him last time with that slider. He started on the outside corner and had that sweeping motion. He ends up over his back foot. Down and in. Good job by Jason Castro as he stayed inside. Looks like Aaron Sebia was arguing that ball hit him, and now John Gibbons comes out of the dugout to talk to Paul Emma. You know, that's that breaking ball we were just talking about. It sweeps across the plate, and you aim it for the right handed batter's back foot. JP looked like he was asking that that ball might have hit him. 
And from there, it looks like it did hit that back foot. From Paul Hemmel. Givens was headed back to Duggan and thought of one more thing and asked Emmel and the umpires continue to have the upper hand in these arguments. <laughs> you don't have any hand in this argument. You got no chance. So Emmel says it didn't hit him. It's a full count now, two outs. Blue Jays have a one nothing lead. Eric Bedard's not going to give Aaron Seavey much to hit on this nope. full count pitch. That first base open. Pitch off the plate. Lucas Harrell loosens up for the Astros, and Bedard has now thrown 94 pitches. And we told you, he said, I'm not going to throw any more than 110 pitches. So, Bo Porter. The manager has to get that bullpen loose. And Sebius strikes out. Another strikeout for Eric Bedard. Blue Jays leave one in scoring position. We'll go to the six, and here comes the Home Hardware Cleanup Crew, brought to you by Natura. Home Hardware's exclusive line of safe, environmentally friendly cleaning products. Mark Burley pounds the strike zone. He throws a first pitch strike to Brandon Barnes. Now he missed. It's one and one to the Astros center fielder. Barnes hitting 247 for the season. Astros are thrilled with his play defensively. He can really go get him in the outfield, and we're not really sure what they're going to end up with as far as the way his bat will play. He's already had several highlight film catches. There's that ball that hits that back foot. Aaron Sebia felt like he got hit by a pitch from Eric Bedard, and Barnes gets hit. That's the way the sixth inning starts here. Fans reminded Mr. Sub Cooler Bag Day will take place on Sunday, July 28th. The Astros and Blue Jays will wrap up this four game series. The game starts at 107. First 20,000 fans will receive a Mr. Sub Cooler bag. Call Blue Jays to 416-341-1234. Log on to BlueJays.com. First stop by most Rogers Plus locations. Ball hit back to Burley. He looks at second and almost waited too long. As 
VR does his job. He puts down the sacrifice bunt. He definitely had a shot at getting that runner at second base. Mark Burley, an excellent fielding pitcher. Watch him bounce off the mound. It's right back to the mound. Watch he catches the ball. He's about halfway to second base. He comes up firing. He has a good shot, but then Alex to get the shore out over at first base. Take a quick look. That's where you're going to have to get some help from your catcher. He'll be telling you where to throw the ball. He's got a perfect vision when he comes out from behind home plate. Burley was in perfect position to make that throw, and they certainly had a shot at Barnes. Jose out two there. First pitch strike. Altuve is just 5-5. Five, five. One of those guys like Dustin Pedroia that's always had to prove himself at every level. He's only 23 years old. Comes out of Maracay, Venezuela. Hits this ball to third. Loring looks back Barnes and throws to first. Altuve is retired. Two down. The all-new completely re-engineered 2014 Acura MDX. The luxury SUV redefined. Experience it now at your local Acura dealer. Thursday night crowd at Rogers Center. And it is a gorgeous night. A beautiful, cool evening. The roof is wide open. 22 degrees at the start of play tonight. Number three hitter is the catcher Jason Castro. He bats with the Astros trailing one to nothing. Well, Burley has been ahead all night. Seven out of ten pitches tonight have been in the strike zone for him. Started the day eight out of nine. First nine pitches, eight of them were in the strike zone. He's made good pitches. And it, you got to feel he wants to get the left-handed hitter right here. Two outs, runner in scoring position, right hander on deck. This is the guy he wants. Chris Carter is on deck, big power hitter, and Burling may have had this scenario in his mind when he took the sure out at first. Just kind of going through the lineup said, okay, I'll get out to me. Then I got a lefty, I can get out of the inning. So why take any chances? Yeah, well, any time a, a team is sacrificing an out, when they bunt, you've got to get an out somewhere. 0 oh, 2. Hit on the ground. Here's Torres at second. Burley pitches out of it. Lead off walk doesn't hurt. We're middle of the six. Blue Jays have a 1 nothing lead. Primetime Sports, it's number one for a reason. The best content you'll find on your radio. Primetime Sports with Bob McCown. Every weekday on Sportsnet 590, The Fan. we got to get Bob McCown up there on the edge of one of these days. I think he'd be a perfect candidate for that. To do that right there, right? Where you lean backwards. Well, what a way to watch the sun go down, eh? New pitcher for Houston will be Lucas Harrell. Harrell. 
worked out of the rotation most of the season. He made 19 starts this season. And 11 of those 19 starts, he allowed two or fewer runs. So he is now working out of the bullpen. This will be his second appearance out of the bullpen. Just moved to the bullpen about three weeks ago. He's got a good arm, but he's had problem locating at times. And you see the, the numbers for him, almost as many walks as strikeouts. But he throws hard. Lucas Hale is now 28 years old. Originally drafted by the Chicago White Sox in June of 2004. Brett Laurie will try to start something here in the sixth. Only four hits in the ball game and a single run. Blue Jays have one hit. Excuse me, Blue Jays have one run on three hits while Houston has managed just one hit. And that was close. I'll say Bautista had to score all the way from first base on a ball in the right field corner by Edward Encarnacion and he crossed the plate right before Edward was thrown out at third base. So a good hustle there to get the run. This is a pop up behind second Altuve out makes a fine running catch. Jason Maxwell the right fielder wasn't going to get there Altuve turned his back to the infield and ran it down in right. Well one thing he can feel. Built low to the ground and he just runs right through this ball right here. You're right. Maxwell had no chance at getting that one. The right fielder a little bit too deep. Didn't get a good read off the bat either. But Altuve picks him up with a nice play. So Eric Bedard turns things over to the bullpen. He goes five innings and trails one to nothing. He threw the ball well. Houston. Has gotten rid of most of their veterans, and as we mentioned, Bedard signed a minor league contract in January this season. But it is the trade deadline period, and there is speculation that Houston might move a pitcher. And if they do move a pitcher, chances are it's going to be Asher Wojcikowski that's called up from Triple A, former Blue Jay farmhand. Yeah. And you say who's that? Asher Wojcikowski, number one pick by the Blue Jays, who was traded. To Houston for Jay Hat last year. Reyes has a base hit, his second of the night. Reyes singled off Eric Bedard to start the game for the Blue Jays, picks up his second base hit. Eric Bedard goes five innings, allows just three hits. The only run of the ball game, he walked the batter and struck out six right there at. 95 pitches in his last three starts 109, 109, and now 95. And you know, got to say, he really threw the ball well. Fortunately for the Blue Jays, all those strikeouts, and he's gone after just five. But he threw the ball well. He did. And he looked free and easy. He had good command of all of his pitches, and he could elevate when he needed to. Rajay Davis 0 for 2. Inside fouled off to finish up on Wojciechowski. He came out of the Citadel. He was a Blue Jays number one pick. He has pitched in double A and now triple A. He's made 14 starts at Oklahoma City in the Pacific Coast League. He's gone 5 and 4 with a 282 ERA. He's allowed 70 hits in the Coast League in 92 and two thirds innings. That's real good. Yeah, he's throwing the ball very well. 90 innings and 70 hits in that league. Outside, it's two and one. They have hit just 205 against Wojciechowski in the Pacific Coast League. That's good too. And everybody knows that that's a hitter's league. Two balls and a strike, one out. 
Reyes at first. Hit to third. Dominguez to Altuve. Back to first. Double play. Boy, Dominguez got rid of that ball in a hurry. Second time Rajay Davis has hit into a 5 4 3 double play. We've played six at Rogers Center. Blue Jays have a 1 0 lead. Ballpark and get a hot dog, nachos, popcorn, peanuts, and apple chips, and a soft drink. All for $39. Call the Blue Jays at 416-341-1234. Log on to BlueJays.com. Just stop by most Rogers Plus locations. Chris Carter goes after the first pitch and fouls it back. Mark Burley, doing a great job. Burley has tied his season high with seven strikeouts. Third time he's done that this year. Did it against the Yankees back in April. He also did it against the Texas Rangers at Texas in the middle of June. Carter hits this ball into center. Easy play for Rasmus. He gets there. That's the first out. Top half of the summer. Burley, his season certainly hasn't been what he had hoped. His career high as a starter came back in 2005. JD Martinez hits this ball deep to left center. This ball is up against the wall. He will stop at second base as they get the ball back in quickly. Roger Davis playing it off the wall, and Martinez has his 15th double. Of the season. It's just the second hit for Houston tonight. And second time that they've gotten a runner in scoring position. The first one was last inning. Cutter down. See the difference between the cutter to the right hander down as opposed to up? He has been working those righties up tonight and he's had a lot of success. That time it was down, and all you have to do as a hitter is just drop the barrel of the bat on the ball. So the tag run is at second. Brett Wallace has struck out twice so far tonight. One out. The Blue Jays have lost nine of their last ten. Houston's lost seven of their last eight. Both of these ball clubs have struggled after the All Star break. Houston went one and five on their last homestand. They were swept by the Mariners and when one of the three games against Oakland. Just starting a big 10 
day road trip, 10 game road trip for the Houston Astros. And Bo Porter knows that his young players are traveling to some of these cities for the first time, adjusting to new ballparks, new playing surfaces. They'll go from here to Baltimore and finish up with three games in Minnesota. Well, there's another good example of what an inside pitch will do to a hitter. Tie him up. 82 miles an hour, and basically it's unhittable. Tough to get. That ball barreled up and then keep it fair. I'm afraid to use that little cutter on the inside part of the plate right there. One and two. J.D. Martinez at second. This is a frustrating at bat for Brett Wallace. He struck out twice. He got an inside pitch. He felt like I can hit that one. He fouls it off his foot. Then he gets an outside pitch where he finally gets his arms extended. Burley takes a little off and he's out in front. And he got him last time looking. Eduardo Perez on the left of your screen is the bench coach. Perez has been a hitting coach. He was for the Miami Marlins for the last two seasons. He managed the Colombian team in the WBC. In that preliminary round they did not advance. Played his collegiate baseball at Florida State and went to College World Series. Manages in winter ball. Also. His dad was a pretty good player. Yeah, he was okay. <laughs> <laughs> you probably watched him a couple of times in Cincinnati, huh? You know, I really liked his dad a lot. When, when growing up in Cincinnati when I was a young kid, uh, Tony Perez, part of the Big Red Machine, and then had the pleasure of being a teammate of his in winter ball, playing for Santurce in the Puerto Rican Winter Leagues in 1981 and 82. One of the best guys you'll ever meet. Yep. Tony Perez. And his son is cut from the same cloth. Ed Wallace strikes out for a third time. Two down. The all new, completely re engineered 2014 Acura MDX. The luxury SUV redefined. Experience it now at your local Acura dealer. Rogers Center. Sun going down in the west on a beautiful night here. Blue Jays would love to get this four game series off on the right foot. They have a one nothing lead. Justin Maxwell at the first hit for Houston with two outs in the fifth. He hit a first pitch single right back up the middle into center. Be very careful with him. 242. Single to knock in that run. We've got Dominguez on deck who hasn't looked real comfortable against Burley tonight. Guess what? Another pitch inside. Matt Dominguez on deck. He has grounded out and flied out. JD Martinez with a one out double. Still at second now with two outs. And Burley has had command of both sides of the plate all night long. That's just like exactly what we were talking about in the opening about him being able to hit the corners and use the change up and use the cutter and he'll be fine. His numbers outstanding here at Rogers Center this year. He's only given up two home runs in his last six starts. Ground ball. Mysterious standing right there at second, and Burley gets out of the inning. The Astros get a double, but to strand their fourth base runner. We'll go to the bottom of the seven. Still one nothing, Jays.
completely re-engineered 2014 Acura MDX. The luxury SUV redefined. Experience it now at your local Acura dealer. Tonight, the drive goes to Edwin Encarnacion. Runner on first base, he shoots the ball into the gap down the right field line. And he is now three quarters of the way there. Where? 100 RBI. This is RBI number 75. He'll get thrown out at third base, but Bautista will score the game's only run on that double by Edwin Encarnacion. One nothing ball game. Bautista takes one outside. The appeal to first base. Dan Bellino said no swing. Ball in his strike. Lucas Harrell in his second inning of work. He gave up a single to Jose Reyes, but erased him with an inning ending double play. He'll get a lot of ground ball outs with that good sinker. He's got a good life on it. Been working on a curveball. Told you he's got a good arm. Mix in a change up every now and then, but a good fastball with good action on it. There it is right there. He was the Astros pitcher of the year last year. 32 starts, 11 11, 376 earned run average. He became the only National League rookie to throw a complete game shutout. But he has been moved into the bullpen as the Astros try to stock up on some young, hard throwers. Yeah, he's got a good arm. He just turned 28 years old. He made his debut in the major leagues in 2010 with the Chicago White Sox. So the Blue Jays have seen him a bit in the past. He got a couple of cups of coffee with the White Sox 2010 and 11. Pitched in a total of 11 games. Made three starts for Chicago in 2010. Upstairs. Full count. Bautista takes the lead off walk. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership. Bautista, a couple of walks tonight. He scored the only run of this game back in the fourth inning. Driven in by this man, Edwin Encarnacion. Edwin, at this point in the season, is one of six different Blue Jays hitters that has amassed 26 home runs and coming into this game 74 RBIs by this date. And it's an impressive list of power hitters in Blue Jays franchise history. George Bell, Sean Green, Tony Batista, Carlos Delgado, Vernon Wells. The six different players, including Edwin Encarnacion, that have hit 26 home runs and driven in at least 74 runs by this date. And some of those players that you mentioned, Delgado and Vernon Wells, they have massive seasons for the Blue Jays. George Bell did it in 87. MVP year. He had 30 home runs and 79 ribbies on the 24th of July. He would go on to hit 17 more and drive in 55 more runs, finished with a monster season. 47 and 134. Way outside. Carlos Delgado, who just joined Bell on the level of excellence, has put up those numbers twice. See, DeRosa is on deck. Delgado in 2000 had 32 homers and 90 ribbies at this point in the season. Would go on to hit nine more home runs, and he drove in 137. So he had the second biggest RBI season behind Bell for the final 62 games of the season. 3 0. Encarnacion takes ball for back to back walks by Harold. You can see 
Adam Lind has come out on deck. DeRosa was standing there, but after the two walks, they will go to the bench and call upon Adam Lind. So Doug Brocale just checked his scouting report, got his information together, and he's going to go out and have a chat with Lucas Harrell. No, that's what we talked about. He's got a good arm, but at times he'll lose the strike. So a little bit too careful with both, both Bautista and Encarnacion. Loses both of them via the walk. Now the Blue Jays will send up Adam Lynn. they got to figure out a way to bring these runners around. Just a one nothing game. Only six hits in the ball game for both parts. Lind has gone just three for 20 on the homestand. Did not get to start with the left-hander Bedard going to the mound for Houston. Lind as a pinch hitter two for nine with an RBI for the season a 295 average. Well, he could do some damage right here. First pitch for John Gibbons. Look for that fastball. Nobody out. First pitch strike. There it was right there. They're not going to bunt here. They had the option of maybe sending a guy up there to pinch hit and then bunt and try to move move the runners up. But John Gibbons elects to go to Lind to try and drive them in. Drives this ball deep to left field. Carter looking up off the top of the wall. Bautista's around third. He'll score. And Conishum is stopped at third and Lind delivers. The pinch hit RBI double. And the Jays lead it two to nothing. Adam Lind made a couple of adjustments the other day. Trying to balance out his weight. Felt like he was getting back too quickly and swinging from his backside. So they wanted to take the weight and make it evenly distributed. 50 50 on both legs to help him get the bat through quicker. It works right off the top of the wall in left field. Took that breaking ball the other way and just missed the three run home run. Meiser is stores. The infield is in. Still nobody out. And Carnacion at third. Linda second. A run in. Asturias takes it downstairs. Well, it's a pretty swing. You can see how balanced he is right there in the. The weight will go forward when you start to swing the bat. That is a power opposite field type of swing right there. Base hit. And kind of shown is in the score. Here comes Lind around throw. The throw is cut off. His first drives in two. As a hitter, you got the infield in. You got a couple of ducks out there to knock in. You got it in. You don't have to be perfect. And this is one where a line drive, if the infield's playing back, maybe you have a shot at catching it. But because they're in, it's going to be two RBIs. Single for Estures. Here comes Lynn with the Blue Jays' third run of the inning. Back to back walks started the inning. Big smile for Adam Lynn, who got the pinch hit RBI double. Now, Colby Rasmus. Rasmus doubled hard to right his last time up. Colby's average at 266. having trouble throwing strikes and it's cost him big time here in the seventh great last inning got the pop up the single double play one two three. Bill Porter now sees him walking a couple batters and a couple of hard hit balls now. You saw Bill Porter sitting next to his pitching coach Doug Brocale. 
And the Astros know this is going to be a growing period. Got to find out what you have. See how Lucas Harrell handles adversity. He was a starter for you. And he's got good stuff. See how he can bounce back after creating a problem for himself here in the center. That's what happens so much so many times with young players where they get in trouble and they get yanked. Right now the game and they can't figure out how to get out of the, the mess that they got themselves into. I like the idea that there's nobody warming up in the bullpen. You say okay you got yourself into this. Let's see how you're going to get out of it. And I too think that it reflects Bo Porter's philosophy of we're trying to build men here. Trying to look to the future. When Porter played football at Iowa, Hayden Fry, the great coach, had a saying that was all around the locker room win. And Porter thought that's unusual, win. But it was an acronym for what's important now. There goes the runner. The throw from Castro is right on the money. And his tourist is thrown out. It's a strike him out, throw him out. Double play. That'll go a long way. Three two pitch. Ball fastball right down the middle. The Sturis is banking on Rasmus swinging and making contact. So the worst thing that would happen would be hey, a ground out, and I'm standing at second base in scoring position with one out, but he. Takes a fastball right down the middle, and it's a double play. Now there are two outs for Aaron Seaver. He struck out twice tonight, both times against Eric Bedard. 94 from Harold, and it evens the count at a ball and a strike. Upstairs, 93. One and two. Breaking ball hammered to left. Chris Carter. He made a play. Got fooled on that line drive, but stayed with it and ends the inning. But the Blue Jays scored three runs. Lynn with an RBI double. Mysore Storis delivers a two run single. Blue Jays have a 4 0 lead as we head to the eighth. He is shutting out the Astros on two hits, and he has really been on his game. Tonight. Well, you could tell it from the first inning. He got two of the first three batters he faced via a strikeout. He's cut the ball under the corners. He's thrown that changeup with good depth, and he has kept the ball down. He 
can see every one of those pitches were either down or right on the corner. He's done that from the beginning of this game. The 21st start of the season for Mark Burley. There are the numbers for his start. 91 pitches through seven innings. This is popped up playable. Aaron Seavey, the catcher, takes the mask off and it's the first out of the inning. Matt Dominguez pops up. He's over three. Burley in great shape too, with those 92 pitches now. One out. He's only looking for five more outs. Chance for a shutout. It's the eighth time this season he has pitched at least seven innings. His season high in pitches. 111 last time out. Second time he's thrown that many pitches in a game, but. Blue Jays are always very conscientious about keeping their pitchers around 100 pitches. But he's different. He's a different kind of guy. He's got a change up. He, he doesn't have that max effort type of thing. He's been doing it for a long, long time. His change up, it, it's not like he's throwing 95 miles an hour and he's going to wear down. 12 consecutive seasons with 200 innings. Another fly ball, easy play into center. Rasmus is there, two outs. Mark Bailey's career high in complete games came way back in 2002 with the White Sox. He had five complete games in a 19-win season. His previous high was the season before when he had four complete games in his first full season with the White Sox. He has thrown a total of 28 complete games, and this is going to be an easy inning. Jonathan VR rounds up. Three up, three down. Just seven pitches for Mark Burley. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. Now it's time for a Blue Jays Central Update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the bottom. Bacardi Oak Park, smooth spiced rum. Bacardi, proud partners of the Toronto Blue Jays. This is a smooth move by the second baseman. All off the end of the bat by Brett Lohr. It's going to go out into the outfield. No chance for Maxwell, the right fielder, to get it. That's Jose Altuve running it down with a nice little basket catch to finish it off. And Brett Lohr will start things off for the Jays in the bottom of the eighth. It'll be 9 1 2 for the Blue Jays. Lucas Harrell in his third inning of relief created his own problems in the seventh. He walked the first two batters, Bautista and Carnacion. They would come around to score. Brett Laurie takes three strikes and he's done. One down in the eighth.
So back to the top of the order. Jose Reyes had another good night at the plate. He's two for three. His average now at 319. AC Jansen just kind of wandering around. I think this whole bullpen needs the night off. I'm with you. Maybe two. Burley has given him that chance too. Throwing up eight shutout innings. He's only given up a couple of hits. Not a safe situation. It'd be better just to take the night off. Let Mark Burley finish this one off. Two and two to Reyes. He bats with one out here in the eighth. Reyes singled in his first at bat. Struck out and then singled against Lucas Harrell in the sixth. He's got his third hit. That's going to get down and go all the way to the wall. Reyes will check in at second and get there with the double. His third hit of the night, his seventh double of the season. He's starting to heat up just a little bit more, starting to show a little bit more pop. That's a high fastball. Climbs all over it, on top of it. All the way to the wall. Looked like it possibly could be three bags for Reyes, but the Astro outfielders get over there, recover very quickly. Barnes, the center fielder, gets it in and holds Reyes to a double. Reyes doesn't have a triple this season. Of course, he missed a lot of time with that sprained ankle. Bajay Davis has gone 0 for 3. He's grounded into a pair of double plays. 4 nothing Blue Jays. They've out hit Houston 7 to 2. Oh, and two. Davis gets to start tonight with the left-hander Bedard starting for the Astros. Takes over in left field for Melky Cabrera. He scored the go-ahead run for the Jays last night in the eighth inning. But the Dodgers tied it up in the ninth and won it in the tenth. There goes Reyes. Ground ball to first. Reyes moves up. He was moving on the pitch. And he moves over to third base with just one out. Rogers customers can watch every Blue Jays game this season on Sportsnet live on your smartphone. Visit RogersAnyPlaceTV.com slash sports to get started. Two down. Reyes moves to third on the ground down. Fred Laurie struck out to start the inning and now Jose Bautista. He has walked twice and scored both times he's walked. He's also lined out. Oh, wow. He had a cut. Oh, you like that, that swing? Pitch. Yeah, I love yeah. that. I, I sense that with that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I just love when he goes up there, runners on base, and he doesn't get cheated. Look where that is on pitch tracks. It's right there. Center cut. Hot shot. Dominguez at third. Spins in. Throws out Bautista. We'll go to the ninth. Mark Burley shutting out the Astros on just two hits. He's going back out to start the ninth. Blue Jays have just one complete game all season long.
is expressed on Sportsnet 360, then it's connected across the channels, East Ontario, West, and Pacific, right after this ball game. And the way Mark Burley works, chances are it's going to be real quick. <laughs> Been quick all night. First pitch strike to the number two hitter, Jose Altuve. Altuve is 0 for 3, grounded out a couple of times, and fly down. Astros have just two hits. Reyes takes the line drive. He said it was a short hop, but he continues to throw. Oh, second base umpire Mike Everett tried to get around and have a look. He signaled no catch, so Reyes continued to play on to first. Yeah, and good on Reyes to finish off that play. Let's see. No, that's right into his glove. That's a catch, but. He's been around. He knows. Go ahead and make the play over at first base just in case the umpire doesn't see it. Don't assume a thing. Mike Everett really couldn't get around in front of Reyes to see that ball. Catcher Jason Castro. So is it a ground out or a line out? You got to say it's a 6 3 ground out. I, I think so. Umpire but, waved him safe. Yeah. Ball and a strike to the Astros catcher. Well, what a beautiful game by Mark Burley, and Blue Jays needed it. Needed to give the bullpen a break. They have been overworked all season long, but especially coming out of the shoot second half after the All Star break. Talked about it yesterday during the broadcast how the bullpen has thrown the most innings in baseball, worked the most per game, also. They've only had one complete game. That was R.A. Dickey. June 26 at Tropicana Field against the Rays. Dickey won the final game of that three game series to salvage the one game. And he, like Burley, went the distance and allowed just two hits in that game. Dickey went nine innings, two hits, no runs, a walk, and six strikeouts. And you look at Burley, very similar numbers tonight. Nine strikeouts for Burley. That's a season high. Two outs in the ninth. Now time for a preview of what's coming up on Connected. Here's Ken Reed and Devonta Osman. Take strike one. Twenty-four thousand one hundred and eighty-eight on hand at Rogers Center. Bounced in the dirt. It's one and one. Mark Burley has eight career shutouts. This ball is hit high in the air, and this should do it. Bautista on the warning track. Mark Burley has his ninth career shutout. Blue Jays snap their seven-game losing streak. Burley going the distance for just the second time for the Jays. His stirs had a big two-run single in the seventh part of a three-run inning. Well, he also accomplished something else by going that... The distance, nine shutout innings for Mark Burley. He gave the bullpen a much needed rest. They could just sit back. John Gibbons can just say, boys, take the night off. Mark Burley did the rest, and he was sharp from the first inning. You can tell he had his good cutter and his good changeup. Look at them. Here they come, the bullpen. Well rested after that performance right there. And they're all coming in together. Something <laughs> doesn't happen very often. Mark Burley with a big smile and well-deserved. Four-nothing shutout. We'll see you tomorrow night. Remember, Blue Jays Express coming up on Sportsnet 360. It's connected on East Ontario, West, and Pacific. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.